Me not winning a championship does not define me. Me not getting the pay raise does not define me. See, we allow this world to define what success is for us. My success, I've already succeeded. There is no failure anymore. I have a family, I have a beautiful daughter and son, and I'm healthy, healthy. I am successful. Welcome back, everyone, to the School of Greatness podcast. We have a very inspiring human today, Jason Wilson, in the house. What's up, man? Good to see you, man. This is really exciting to be here. I'm so I'm glad you. you're here, man. This yeah. is, um, I think I learned about you maybe two years ago mm -hmm. on social media, yeah. probably from one yeah. of the videos that went viral or something. Yes. Started following you, your work. I've shared a bunch of your videos over the past. I shared one, I think, a couple days ago, actually, that yeah. did really well. And I think what you're doing is so needed in the world and you're just a massive inspiration. So I acknowledge you for that and I appreciate you because so many men are suffering and are hurting and are hurting others because of it. Mm -hmm. And we're in a time right now where saying that men are suffering is probably like the thing that women don't want to hear. Hmm. That's true. They don't want to hear that. They want to yeah. hear, well, women have been suffering for so That's much longer. Truth. That's the truth. And so I think there's a, a fine line of having a conversation about this. Mm -hmm. But in a video you talked about the other day, you know, the statistics are that men are committing more suicide than women. Mm -hmm. Men feel like they're prisoners emotionally more than women, and many other things. And um, because of those reasons, I think men in general suffer worse, mm -hmm. and they cause harm on other people and themselves because of it. Yes, and statistics show that it's, it's affecting us more than women. And I like to say that we're both hurting. And so you're right, if we, focus on one gender, not the other, you know, automatically one side will become defensive. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that we're both hurting, especially in my community, the African-American community. It's, uh, we wear trauma like a badge of honor because of all that we've gone through um, and what we go through now. And so because of that, if you stay in a traumatized mind, you really can't enjoy the blessing of the present. And so your threshold is always here. As soon as the slightest thing happens, you snap or you have a traumatic experience or a breakup like we were just talking about, it's compounded because you haven't released what happened 10 to 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important that, I always say that men learn how to be human. You know, we are more concerned with being masculine. And when I looked up the word masculinity, it was amazing. It's um, attributes that are traditionally ascribed to men like strength and boldness. But I said, but they're not, ascribed to being a human. Mm -hmm. And so really, it's no, I don't think it's a thing as false masculinity because really if you just say you're operating and being masculine, all you're gonna exude are those masculine attributes like aggression, mm -hmm. uh, of strong, being strong, bold, um, assertiveness, but no compassion, no caring, no sensitivity. And so because of that, we're not comprehensive. And you know, again, when when we judge ourselves or place ourselves against what this world say a man is, and so you say, man, I, I like gardening, for instance. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not being a man. Men don't garden. Now you think I'm no good. I don't need to be here. Now you say, hey, I can't even get a girlfriend. Yeah. Now you're going down that path. And then you think of suicide or you know, taking your own life. And that's the tragedy of not being able to express your emotions. Yeah, and I think um, the more I've learned about myself and just humanity in general, I really believe that masculinity is being in service mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I would think of as like a, a, a man, as someone, someone who's masculine, as someone who serves other people. Serves himself mm -hmm. for their dreams and then mm -hmm. is of service to other people. And it doesn't matter what, um, if it's a strong uh, emotion, if it's compassion, if it's something yeah. else, like yeah. as long as they're in service. Yeah. They might need to pull strength, they might need to pull compassion in the moment, but all of that makes us human. But that's why I say, I like the word comprehensive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, comprehensive man, basically you, you go in and out of each exactly. uh, attribute. Yeah. You know, I remember I was training in one martial art and my instructor asked all of us, says, who are you? And we say, I'm a warrior, I'm a king, you know, I'm a provider. And he started laughing and he says, next time someone asks you that, I want you to say, you're anything and everything that you have to be at any given moment. Ooh. And he was the first one I wrote about in my book. Actually, I'm, th I'm there to learn how to fight and defend myself in the streets of Detroit. But he was showing me how to deal with my emotions. And he was the first person that told me that I operated 
with a passive aggressive mindset. Mm -hmm. And so when he revealed that to my man, I can be strong and sensitive, courageous and compassionate. And so that allowed me to uh, experience, I'm experiencing a different type of life now. Growing up when I couldn't hold a woman's hand without getting dogged by my boys really? or getting beat down in Detroit. Yeah, you definitely, you couldn't at a concert, a rap concert, you couldn't walk holding hands with your girlfriend. Without getting and, made fun of? Oh, or, yeah, or, yeah. or getting rushed, you know, beat wow. down, seriously. And so now I'm studying to find out that holding hands actually releases pain in the body. Mm -hmm. So here it is as men, we've denied all of these things, these great uh, um, expressions that God has given us just to, for the sake of being what we call a man, you yeah. know, and so. Well, there's studies in science that's shown that like hugging someone for more than three seconds like mm -hmm. creates a sense of compassion and love and yeah. dopamine and yes, yes, comfort yes, and all these things. Yes. So when we don't have physical touch, we're denying ourselves of these feelings that we really exactly. desire. Exactly, you know, yeah. that's my whole thing about being comprehensive, meaning I could finally live from how my heart wants me to. Mm -hmm. So when you ascribe to just being masculine, you can only operate in those attributes. But if I want to love my wife or carry her or dance with her or tell her I love you or say you hurt me, I can't because those aren't masculine attributes. Mm -hmm. And so I refuse to be like limited to that anymore, you know. Yeah. Uh, so mis we misconstrue masculinity for being humanity. It's right. It's funny because if you're a man looking to attract the right partner or to attract, mm -hmm. you know, a great partner. Yes. My friend Matthew Hussey, who's like a dating uh, relationship uh, expert and coach to women, he's always talking about how for men, like, it's not that you're strong that's attractive. It's mm -hmm. that you're strong and you're sensitive. You know, it's not that you're... My wife was saving right? to that, yes. It's yes. not that you're you're funny all mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. and you're able to make me laugh. Yes. It's that you're funny and you can be, like, grounded. Yes, sir. It's, yes, sir. it's both and. It's the contrast that makes you even more interesting and more unique in the world as opposed to, I'm always strong, I'm mm -hmm. always a provider. Like, that gets boring. You can't be strong all the time anyway. And so what's amazing, I was talking with a friend of mine who desires to get married, and I did a video and it was hilarious. And we were just talking, he says, man... She has to always see Batman. She can never see Bruce Wayne. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? He says, well, I can't let her know that I'm, I, I lack confidence or I'm depressed mm. sometime in the mornings or I have a long day at work. I may need to drink to reset myself. I said, well, what do, you, what, do you, what do you think she's there for? You know, and so with my wife, we got it together together. You know, we got our first house together. Mm -hmm. We, of course, you get the children together, but everything, our nonprofit, without my wife, it couldn't happen. And so... It's, it's, it's sad to see so many men um, uh, miss what they could have based on what they don't have. You know, uh, another friend of mine, he says, uh, I want to wait till I have my ducks lined in a row. And I laughed at that. I said, when is the last time you've seen ducks in a row? <laughs> You're right, right. Do you know within a matter, I think a matter of months, he married, uh, he got engaged to the woman of his dreams. And now they're off starting their own business together and everything because he felt he had to have everything together. Mm, had to have a certain amount of income yes, and a job. It's, and it's, that's, uh, it's, that's not, if that was the case, that means everyone who has wealth or is rich, their marriages are great, and we know that's not true. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's uh, misleading mantras are leading our men astray, you know, mm -hmm. like the classic one, no pain, no gain. And I always say sometimes pain is not meant for us to push through it, sometimes it's meant for us to slow down and think through it. And so me being, I trained in martial arts for years, and. To, and weight trained as well, I can't tell you how many injuries I have to this day because of Pushing I through the pain. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, um, it's motivational tactics that's actually hurting us as men. Yeah, I think a wise man listens to his body and his, mm -hmm. his emotions and mm -hmm. is able, knows when to stop. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, yeah, and, and you know, go ahead, go ahead. And, keep, and checks their ego at the door. <laughs> yeah. You know, I learned this over the last five years the hard way because when I started doing CrossFit five, six years ago, I was just like, keep pushing, yeah, yeah. beat the competitor, you know, and then my back goes out for two months and I can't work out. Mm -hmm. The wise human is the one who listens mm -hmm. and checks their ego you can still be competitive, you can mm -hmm. still strive to uh, succeed and mm -hmm. achieve and win or whatever, but yes. when you feel something is off, yeah. if you're gonna get injured, stop. You know, yeah. if you can deal with the pain, that's one thing, but creating an injury is another you thing. You know, interesting, we talk about, like, this is when you're, you're uh, injury in football, yeah. your career ending injury, yeah. you know? But like with trauma, it's the same way, you know? It's like, if you had an all-star uh, on your basketball team and say he fractured his ankle, you're not gonna throw him right back out there. Unfortunately, in society, when we experience an uh, uh, emotional fracture, 
um, we expect that we're supposed to just go back out and start our day right over and go again. Then we wonder why that broken heart never really heals, why the next relationship fails just like the previous one. Because we haven't allowed our time to get ourselves time to really heal, you know, and so um, that's the same also with our women as well. You know, it's like it's hard when you've been let down with, by so many men and you have the right one coming and you're to guarded. Trust, you have you, trust you, right away, see, yeah. All of us as humans in this society, we have to get up and keep going. You can't grieve longer than a week. And then if you have bereavement time, that time is actually spent planning the funeral. Mm. So we really never have time to grieve. And then we wonder why we're more sad and we're always in a performance-based mode, you know, instead of just right. saying, I want to live from who I am and not what I do. So yeah. that's very important. I'm hoping, uh, all my mission is to let people I, uh, identify the trauma and emotional pain so that we can release it and get healed from it instead of living in it. Yeah. You've been through a lot of trauma you write about in your book. Yes. Um, when did you realize that your life was filled with trauma and how did you learn to start processing pain? That's a very good question um, because I grew up expecting trauma was just a part of the black experience and it's not. You know, when I was in the eighth grade, a good friend of mine had gotten shot in the head. You know, um, a friend- An eighth with, grader? Yes, it was, it was the first school shooting in Detroit history, and a um, classmate was passing a gun around, small caliber, automatic, which is hard to really uh, discharge if you don't know what you're doing, and a bullet went off and shot her in the head. And, um, you know, I, I didn't even cry and we were close. And um, I didn't revisit that, man, until I wrote about it in a chapter, and it, uh, it's hitting me now, <clears throat> because a guy says, I need you to go back. You didn't grieve that. Wow. I literally went in my backyard and started throwing ninja stars because I didn't know how to process right the pain. Right afterwards. And, and in yeah. our communities, in the black communities, we don't have an abundance of counselors. So when a tragedy happens, it's maybe two social workers for 400 kids. So how do you help us process mm -hmm. that? So you go from that to I go prior to my grandfather's lynching and beating and then seeing it affect my mom, her anger and depression, then my brother being murdered, and then on my other brother being murdered, wow. then my best friend dropping of a heart attack, and great shape, beautiful guy. 40 year old, 41. 41 year old. Yeah. Man, he was one of maybe five guys in the gym could bench press the 200 pound dumbbells. Beautiful guy, dropped dead because of the stress and all that he was holding the in. Emotional trauma. He couldn't let anyone know. And even I'm his best friend, he couldn't tell me because he was big D, he was strong. And so I really didn't realize that this was playing a role until I was, my marriage was uh, in jeopardy. Really? I said, wait a minute, this is me. I caught myself, I mean, literally when I could experience joy, I would be on the couch, folded up, not in a fetal position, but like, I don't want to talk to you, I'm mad. And just stay there, and it's a beautiful day, my wife would take my kids out. I didn't, like, what's going on with you? And I didn't realize it until one day, I pray for God to break me because I'm a strong-willed mm. person and I know he needs to use me to help people. And people are so tired of religion and all this other stuff. It's like, can you just show me? Like Gandhi says, I love your Christ, but I don't like your Christians because they're not like your Christ. Mm. And so I said, God, can you please gracefully break me because I'm tired of fighting this war. What's going on in me that's stopping me from really living a powerful life? And that process started with me almost dying from a shoulder surgery. Wow, when was this? 2009, okay. and I knew something was gonna happen so much so that I had my beard dyed. This is when I used to dye my beard. Had my beard dyed and, and shaved, and my son's hair was cut just in case I didn't make it out the surgery. The mortician would mess me up. Hmm. And so I made it through the surgery, thank God for my wife being there because my lungs started filling up with fluid once they took out the IV and I think the trach for the anesthesia. Mm -hmm. And after that, my mother uh, was diagnosed with dementia. And as a man, you, know, you want to be strong. But when you see someone you love so much, like with your father, mm -hmm. deteriorate before your eyes, a man, a man who champions you, supports you, uh, taught you when everyone else would tease you and just there for you now, he's not half the man he used to be. You have to cry. Mm -hmm. You have to release it. And it was so heavy, Lewis, I couldn't be this masculine man anymore. And that's when I said, oh, wait a minute, this is trauma. I can't just go 
throughout my day saying, it's okay. And a friend of mine told me one day, I says, man, why am I crying every day? What's going on? He says, Jason, that's your mom. It's okay. Hmm. And uh, as, as a man, when you, everyone wants to be hard, but we don't really want to do anything that's hard. We're running in a burning building to save our family. We're running gunfire. We'll jump by heli helicopters. We'll do everything. But expressing how we feel right. without balling up a fist or punching holes in a wall, we don't want to touch that with why a 10-foot pole. Why is that? Because we've been indoctrinated into this uh, form of manhood that's not really being a man. We're human. You know, we're, we're, you can't tell a man that he can only be strong, a warrior, um, a provider. Yeah. And, cause you've, and if that's it, he's cut off half of his humanity. So it's like, I mean, it's like having a, a, a dog or something and you only want him to be in attack mode all day. It's, you not, a fun, it's it, not a fun dog to It's not around. a fun dog and he, won't, he probably won't even live that long. Right, he'll be exhausted. He had, a dog has to have the love, the caring. He has to have family where he can show a different side to. My brother was a veterinarian. That's why most dogs who are fight, fighting dogs they don't live that long, not only because of the, the, the type of um, abuse that they go through, but the lack of love around. You yeah. see it in the, some of the videos I think you shared before where you adopt a pet, and you can literally see this dog, his emotions being thankful to the owner mm -hmm. because he's not meant to live as a fighting pit bull. Yeah, I think anger really hurts us a lot. Yes, it does. It and hurts it, our... It's a power, though. It's a great power if you allow it to process. I love the scripture. It says... Be angry, but do not sin. So anger is a great power. Mm. So think about what you're doing. Okay, for instance, why I admire you so much. You refuse to allow what has happened to you, the things that you've went through, to affect others. That's anger. So some anger. Now, I don't want to see that happen. I yeah. hear it when you speak. Yeah. You speak in power. And it's okay to process things with anger, but don't allow it to rule you. Don't like act the, from anger. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Well, you can, but you can't allow it to make you do something that can hurt someone. Mm, or right, right. It's right. detrimental to why you're angry, the, the, the righteous thing that you should do. Right. Like Rosa Parks was angry. Martin Luther King was angry. Mm -hmm. But it was more from a place of love. Yeah, with, because of the, the mistreatment yeah. Yeah. of a people. Mm -hmm. And then what I love most, I call them my brothers and sisters from another mother. They joined in in the movement as well because mm -hmm. they were angry. So you can see how anger could be used in a beautiful way. Of course. Um, if we're allowed to process it. And that's what I do with a lot of my boys. In the video you just shared with my son boxing, I said, why are you crying? I'm not gonna yell at you, why are you crying? Mm -hmm. Let's go down this rapid trail, let's see. And if it's legit, let's either we're gonna keep it, if it's legit, if it's not legit, let's cast it. And let's move on. And that's what men want. Men just wanna be in a safe space where we can say I'm hurting and not be condemned. Mm -hmm. you know? It's so hard though. It's so hard because we feel condemned when we express that we're hurting. We yeah. don't get rewarded for sh expressing hurt. We get made fun of, picked on, bullied. Sometimes, yes, yes, yes. again, I'm not saying all women, but sometimes yeah. the women in our life oh, are saying, sure. man up, yeah, I, I need you to be strong right now. But they don't understand when you say man up, you're insinuating that he's not doing something right. Mm -hmm. And so I don't even like the word man up, I like the word man down. Mm. Basically, let's shed this for uh, masculinity, just living out of masculinity. It's a time to be masculine. Again, but I want men to operate in being comprehensive or human. Yeah. So you're right, it's like with my wife, could you imagine how I felt even yesterday? You know, but that was a process to say, you that hurt me. I'd rather say that than punch holes in the walls like I used to. And I gotta go back and repair that. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. But it's amazing, you know, um, I find that women, good women, Okay, we have to be real specific there. Same thing with saying good men. That they appreciate when a man expresses that side of himself. Mm -hmm. So um, what should a man do if he expresses a hurt side of himself mm -hmm. and his female partner doesn't accept it or makes him wrong mm -hmm. or is scared of it or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. Well, How do you get through that? Well, for me, you have to find the peace within yourself. So, um, like, if uh, I cry, I remember one time I was in an event and I was moved by something that happened on stage and I started crying and there's a lot of just guys that are strong, you know. I think we was at a, a weightlifting competition, <laughs> but something, the guy who did a, a demonstration. 
I was comfortable in my humanity and M-A-N, all caps, because I'm comprehensive. So if you're not comfortable with who you are, you're always gonna be performance-based. Mm. And so um, I got tested before when I was uh, crying one time at another event I was helping youth, and the guy thought he could just come and just try to body slam me. You know, I'm in a, I saw a young man just wanna give his life to God, and it moved me. I had to grab this boy before I knew it and put him in a control hole. He tried to body slam you because you yeah. were crying? Yes. Just he thought right. I was weak. He thought I was weak. He's like, oh, this is a great moment to, to take me. Yeah, seriously. Just because you were crying? Yes. And this was the first time I cried in, a, in front of a group of men. This was years ago. Before I could control him, Lewis, before I knew it, I had tossed him over my head. Wow. Because of the judo techniques I knew. And I was like, oh, no. And before he got down, I grabbed him and I put him in a rear naked choke. Now, the thing is that I said, wait a minute. There's nothing wrong with me crying, but my reaction was wrong, mm. okay? So even though he, I was in the fear of my life, I was more embarrassed that he was trying to call yeah. me a punk pretty much. Yeah, of course. And so, um, but- So you try to make him look like a punk, yeah. I had to, you yeah, know, yeah, but, yeah. but as I grew past that, yeah. now when I cry in front of my students, fathers, I give them the freedom to cry. Wow. And so in front of you, I could cry on cameras. It doesn't matter anymore because I'm free, man. Yeah. I, I'm, I don't live from uh, what I do anymore. I was performance-based. I would work 12 hours in the studio trying to make the hit records and all this other stuff. Even as I got into working with youth and our nonprofit, then I realized, why am I doing this? Because of the lack of affirmation I received from my father and other men that I desired it from. So you're doing it to gain affirmation? Yeah, from, from people. Like, that's what people pleasing comes yeah. from, is we're trying to... We're afraid of the judgments yeah, of others. exactly. But yeah. it's like, I know who I am. I'm a loving person. If you can't... This is one thing that's interesting. Um, a celebrity I leave nameless, and I wanted to text him a heartfelt message because something he had did was very powerful and impact me, impacted me. And someone says, you know, you shouldn't text him all of that because he's busy, this and that. And I simply said, if I can't text him this, he can't be my friend mm. because this is who I am. I love hard. And because I love hard, you have a committed friend. You got someone to go to war with you. You got someone to cry with you, someone who will pray with you. So I have to operate in the fullness of who I am. And that's what men are scared of. See, the conflict comes when, because we feel it. You feel it in a relationship. You want to love without limits, mm -hmm. but you guard it. And that's where that conflict comes in. Yeah. To actually say, you know what? I'm going to try being, uh, I'm going to exercise a masculine attribute. I'm going to be bold in loving my wife mm -hmm. without fear. You see how you can use the masculine. Right, too? right. Yeah, so that's what I do. You know, I didn't want to go to my wife last night because to me, I wasn't wrong. I went, I said, let's pray. And we're praying like this, like, oh, God, you know, I was, it was hilarious. She mad and I'm mad. But I, I'm tired of losing, man. Mm. I can't. I can't keep doing the same things over and over. I, with my daughter, you know, it. it um, the years she needed me to love her, you know, growing up, uh, you want you want to protect your daughter. You want to discipline her, but after a certain age, a daughter needs to know you love her. You know, instead of saying, "Why are you with that guy? He's no good." I need to say, "Princess, you're so priceless to me." You know. What is so attractive about this guy? It's a different tone. It, it, it conveys a different message. Mm. And I refuse to allow me to stay there in that relationship with my daughter. And so one day I came to her, I fell to my knees. And I said, I'm sorry for everything I've done. She says, well, Dad, you're just trying to be overprotective. No, I was able to trace it back to the wounds that were inflicted upon my heart by my own father. Mm. And so you have a lot of good men who are hurting and they're really, I don't think this is an uphill battle, Lewis. They're ready to release it, man. They just they're need, tired. They, it's right here. Um, it was one, uh, the guy from Saturday Night Live just posted it. He doesn't want to live anymore, the actor. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, men are tired, man. The emergency rooms now are seeing an influx of mental health issues because there's nowhere for us to go. And so we're tired of being judged. The barbershops aren't even safe because everyone there is, is, is uh, wearing the mask of masculinity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so putting up a front, making fun of each other, or whatever. That's why I love your documentary, man. It, Thank it, you. Uh, 
you did a great job because you allowed yourself to be vulnerable and you 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 didn't boast in you you being tough. You show what yeah. really happens when you're not really taking care of yourself and living yeah. from what you really want to you know living from the heart within you. Yeah, thanks, yeah. man. Yeah, for um, sure. So how do we, when a man is, if someone is listening to this and they mm -hmm. feel like I'm tired, mm -hmm. I've been suffering for too long, maybe I've got some past traumas, mm -hmm. maybe I've been hurt, maybe I've hurt other people, mm -hmm. maybe I've done things I'm not like, proud of, mm -hmm. how can men start to process? What's the first couple of steps to, Okay, well, because it's a, it's a lot of stuff that, that men have gone through and have been holding on to for a long time. Absolutely, so yes. So how do we just, it's not that easy to be like, okay, I'm just going to let go. That's true. Release. I mean, you can, I can easily say, you know, my best advice would be to get a counselor that you can trust. That's, mm -hmm. that would be number one. But we're not going to do that right off the bat. And so what I had to learn how to do was allow myself time to sit still and to allow myself to feel, you know, um, why did it hurt you so much earlier uh, when someone, just say, cut you off on a freeway or something? Mm -hmm. If I don't process that at night, it carries over into the next day. So for men, I would and tell for you. years. Exactly, and years, yeah. yeah. And then the next situation, you may want to pull over and say, let's fight because you didn't allow yourself time, <laughs> right? right? I've almost gotten a fight <laughs> here in L.A. Before I started like processing all this stuff, you almost got to fight a lot of times. I saw for your documentary. <laughs> so, so, but one time, I was in traffic and I literally chased someone down. Like, Are you serious? This, man? this happened like what was this? Maybe five and a half years ago. This is when I knew like my life was like something was wrong with me, because I was driving like a few blocks away. I don't think I told this story. I was driving, and you know I look <laughs> when you stop at a stop sign, you typically look left. Okay. Right to see who's coming. Okay. And I pulled too far forward, and I guess there was a runner coming by on the right. So I turned, and he's like coming up, and he ran into my, he like stopped, but then he punched the car, right? Because he was like, why didn't you see me type of like action? Okay. No, <laughs> that was a trigger. That was like, a, that was like abuse in the past yes, trigger. Yes, yes, yes. So he starts running. I screech out of there and chase this guy down in my car, right? Mm -hmm. This is stupid. I'm not proud of this. I chase him down. He starts running away. I chase him down. I start screaming at him like, stop. Let's talk to man to man, right? And then I finally like pull over and go after him. And he starts going the other way. And I was just like, it's a good thing he didn't come up to me because I probably wouldn't have had the control to like not want to fight him. And you probably wouldn't be here right now. Maybe. Yeah, yeah assault, it might be. You know? yeah. yeah. And so, so with that said, so imagine, so starting at home, sitting still, processing it there, and then being able to walk with it. So a lot mm -hmm. in this country, a lot of training I've been through as far as meditation, a lot of people in this country thinks meditation is concentration, and it's not. You should be able to take, be in that same state, seated, laying down, standing, and fighting. Mm. So I, I, and people say, well, man, no, you just, you're just a unique guy. No, I get angry when things like that happen. But I quickly start processing. It's like a computer. Do, do, is this worth it? Go down the line. This is it. Process your emotions. Are you feeling? Is this accurate? Why would you go here? And before I even say anything, I can pull off. Mm -hmm. And so I would tell men to learn to sit still and express how you feel. Express the pain. Just say if you're married and your wife says something to you early at work. I always say, I tell my men to always go to her before you go to bed. You know, I'm taught through the scriptures is do not let uh, the sun go down on your wrath. You know, basically don't hold on to anger that long. Another, another proverb I love is like anger is like hot coals in the lap of a fool, only he gets burned. Hmm. And so I would tell men first to sit still and process how your day went. How are you feeling? Why you felt that way? Write it down mm -hmm. and revisit it so you can see and start tracing what triggered you. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the beginning steps. When I started to process all my past and all my hurt and pain, it was the first time I was able to go to sleep, like within a few minutes. Wow, that's good. My whole life, it would take me like an hour, two hours to, to go to bed. I would try to go to bed early. It didn't matter how hard I worked out or how mm -hmm. tired it was. It was rare if I fell asleep within 10 minutes. Wow. And then about five years ago when I started to fully process it all. And then at night, I would sit down and either to myself write down what I was grateful for from the day awesome. or express it to my girlfriend at the mm -hmm. time and mm -hmm. say what I was grateful for. It was like I could complete the day in peace mm -hmm. and go to sleep as opposed mm -hmm. to 
pain or fear or anxiety or anger, which yes. is what I was living in for 25 years. Yeah, every time I come home, man, I lay down on my back, my legs folded, and allow myself just to release everything that's happened. I'm okay, I've given my best for the day, I'm not staying up late because I have to get up early, and I'm done, it's finished. And so uh, that's the benefit of being able to not, not be a slave to your emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, another <clears throat> one of my martial arts instructors told me, um, uh, emotions are great servants but poor masters. You and so, that according yeah, to Yeah, and so I tell a lot of my students, they come, I'm tired, I don't feel like training today. I say, I don't wanna be here either, you know? Yeah. I say, but when is the best time to be tired? They were like, at home when I'm laying down. I say, exactly. So you need to rule that emotion right now because it can injure you if you're acting, uh, if you're lazy and someone is throwing you. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I'm real big on is applying emotional stability throughout our day. And so one of my pet peeves was when uh, I go with my family to a nice restaurant and I get bad service. And so how many times do we leave the restaurant angry, uh, didn't experience the night that we desired? And we didn't really articulate how we feel as men. We mad, we eat, this, I'll never come back again. Let's get out of here. And we, we talk about it even all the way home. What I do now is when I see the wait, waitress or waiter come over and I can tell they're really not, uh, they're not here. They're not present with me. They're either something happened with the last table or they may be having a bad day. I say, hi, excuse me, I'm, I'm with my family and I'm really paying to have a great experience. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you have a lot on your mind. Can you please get someone else to help us? Because I really want uh, my money's worth and I really want to enjoy my evening. My daughter can tell you, my wife can tell you. Every time I do that, they say, well, what's, what's wrong, can you, is something, you can see it on me? I'm like, yes. Then they talk to me. Mm. My daughter's not doing well in school and I had to shake it off and come here and help, you know, serve people. And that's a hard job, man. You have to put everything aside. Your tips are based on your promptness and your attitude but yet you have problems as well. Yeah. So when I give them an opportunity to express it, by me being able to express myself without being irate. Or making it, them wrong or, yeah. This one guy was just so troubled about uh, paying for school. And I said, look man, you know, I don't want to infringe on what you believe. I said, but what's your faith? He says, I'm a Christian. I said, okay, cool. I said, me and my wife, we're gonna act like we're ordering, but we're gonna pray. So we're praying, but we're acting like we're ordering food. We had the best experience ever. Wow. He says, man, thank you so much. I needed that. My day is 100% better. Yeah. But that's all because I learned how to express the emotion. And the same, like so many men want to be the best lovers to their wives, right? I hate my daughters in here, but... Yeah. <laughs> she here anyway. She? <laughs> I always consider, you know, um, every man considers himself a great lover, yeah, right? Okay. But when you get married, okay, um, you know, you're making love to your wife, the same woman, over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. What takes it to another level? So for me, I found, and my wife can testify to this, is when I became in tune with my emotions and willing to be vulnerable, now we're able to connect on a much deeper level. She has, her experiences have heightened like three times. Wow. You know, I remember, um, Early in our marriage, we would use the little toys in the room, okay? And I didn't like those because, to me, it... it, it uh, they were band-aids. Not only yeah. that, it, um, it's like a replacement for me. Like, I can't really keep up with a rabbit toy, you know? I just, <laughs> I just can't. But what I learned, I decided, to say, wait a minute, if this piece of whatever can do these things, I'm a spirit, man. I can definitely take you there but it took for me to get in tune and free mm. and not look at foreplay as labor, but love. It's like, that's my desire. Like, I can't do, have, make love to my wife without, I don't, I'd rather her reach that place mm -hmm. through foreplay because the connection is so much stronger. And once I became comprehensive and am able to express myself throughout every area of my life, man, it's, uh, it's a game changer and although, mm. Uh, you and I were discussing earlier, there will always be challenges. Sure. Um, but the person that can rule their emotions can master them all. So how do we rule our emotions? Practice ruling them. Um, for instance, uh, say everyone wants to, you want to get in shape, right? You want to have a six pack. Mm -hmm. And so for me, uh, my desire is to remain faithful to my wife until we're gone. You know, I was 
on a plane coming in, I saw an elderly couple holding hands, just comforting each other because of the turbulence. It's beautiful to me. Mm -hmm. So, but we know we have temptations. And so uh, one day when I was trying to get cut up, I saw in my cabinet a bag of Lay's potato chips. Mm. And I love Lay's, so especially the plain ones unopened. <laughs> because of my relationship with God, I am a spirit man. His spirit is in me. And so I walked by and said, well, you know what? Two chips won't hurt me. But he knows my desire. Mm -hmm. He said, wow, that's interesting. If you can't deny those bag of Lay's, how are you going to turn down those legs? Mm. It's just chips. If I lose to that, how much easier will it be for me to lose to a woman mm -hmm. that's uh, beautiful and attractive and say me and my wife get in an argument and this woman follows me on social media, knows everything what makes me tick. They can fake it all they want. Now, it's so easy now mm -hmm. because they can just follow you. Say, okay, cool. I need to dress this way because he likes women who are modest. Oh, he's a, a man of God. Oh, I'm a Christian today. Right. But I have Seduce to... Seduce you, yeah. Yeah, so again... We have many uh, uh, opportunities in life to practice ruling our emotions, like road rage. Mm. You know, the guy cutting you off, it is not worth it. Learn to look down the road. Uh -huh. You have to. In a matter of a second, you can't because you literally can lose your life. Everything. It's not worth it, it's man. It's not worth it. Yeah, so. You started this... Um this nonprofit, yes, called the Cave. But well, the union is the nonprofit. The, the Cave union. of Adullam is the male academy. It's gotcha. under its umbrella. Gotcha. Yes. And when did that start? Two thousand and three. I started the nonprofit. Got yes. it. And the Cave has been, you know, uh, talked about, it and then it's been in TV shows and mm -hmm. movies and yes. examples yes. of. I think it was in uh, This Is Us. Yes, too, This right? Is Us yeah. used our, our uh, father son. We called it the father son up ceremony. Yeah, the ritual. Yes, yeah, it's yes. very powerful. Thank what you. is and what is that ceremony? Can you explain? It's an initiation process. So basically, we, we, we teach, train, and transform uninitiated boys into comprehensive men. And so, um, I don't know if you've been initiated into manhood. Majority of us haven't. And that's why so many grown men are stuck doing childish things. Mm -hmm. And so, we take them through a series of basic training. They have to learn things about, of course, it's faith-based for us. They learn mm -hmm. things about God, the Bible, how to rule your emotions on that level as well as, well as in the world. But then also we challenge them physically because I use the arts and physical training to break them down so the emotions can arise. Right. And that's what I really want. And the beauty piece is that when they pass their part, they still have not completed the test until their father comes on the mat <sighs> and does the push-ups with them. And so the fathers are really emotional because they desire that they wish they would have their fathers take them through this. So it's symbolic in saying that no matter what you go through, son, I'm going to be here with you throughout the journey, pushing you, just like your dad. Yeah. You know, and so um, that's basically what the initiation is. And then once they pass there, they go through another five phases, and then they go through a final test where they're honored by a community as being men. What's the final test? Secret. Can you share it? You can't, can't share it. Yeah. Well, the physical but, or emotional test? It's, it's comprehensive in its approach. Mm -hmm. So. Um, they're trained on etiquette, grooming, basic construction skills. Um, of course, martial arts, a combination of jujitsu, aikido, uh, judo, boxing, just to test the emotions because um, you can fake it uh, in uh, an intellectual, intellectually based rite of passage program. You can do all the answers, answer all the questions, look the part, you're strong, you're ready to go, and now they send you off. Not in the cave of Adelum, we're gonna test you. Mm -hmm. We're going to see if you really know what you know. We want to see if you really can rule that emotion. And so we challenge them in that way. And so they leave there um, tested, meaning we have a saying, everyone has a moment on the mat. Everyone will face their greatest fears. Everyone will face their insecurities. You cannot escape it. And so my whole thing is to give you the test now before you go in life mm. and take the final exam. Wow. And so could you imagine at, as you go through all of these phases, the final test is you go through, you're tested on all of these phases. It's a two day training. And then you cross with your fathers in front of you. So yeah. It's powerful. Yeah, it's very powerful. And so um, wow. something I always desired. And the reason uh, people say, man, how, my, well, actually my son said this. He said, uh, dad, how, you, how did you become a great dad when your father wasn't? 
I said, son, I simply gave you what I longed for. Mm -hmm. And so as men, broken men, you know, instead of living from my brokenness, start practicing living for what you long for, mm -hmm. from what you've longed yeah. for. Um, it's the same Frederick Douglass says, it's easy to uh, build up children or raise up children than it is to repair broken men. It's something like that. And I used to love that quote. The problem is, I'm sure he didn't mean that we should leave men broken. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happened in society. We focus on the boys and the children and the men, you know, you just have to make it, fake it till you make it to your grave. Yeah. And that's what men are doing. What would you say is your biggest insecurity still? Um, dancing is one. Um, I want to dance. I want to, like I was a DJ, believe it or not. How can a DJ not know how to dance? Yeah, yeah. But a DJ just has to mix. And so up here, I'm good. I can dance all day <laughs> up here, you know. You mean the footwork, though. The footwork is like, okay, wait a minute. These have to move, too? You know, so there's insecurity of mm. being laughed at. Mm. You know, no one wants to be laughed at. In mm. martial arts, the biggest issue with not executing a technique isn't that it's really complicated. It's the fact that you don't want to look nasty doing it. Yeah. Every man wants to look good doing a certain technique. But that's the problem, you leave your ego outside. And so I would say just um, being, you know, the dancing piece, but I don't know if that's an insecurity per se. Let me see. Um, don't you dance in uh, martial arts, essentially? It, it is the same, you yeah. know. Um, me and my wife were uh, messing around maybe a couple nights ago. I tried a little something, you know. Um, but <laughs> just that's something I'm going to work through. So yeah. that's a prime example. Do I let that fear stop me? I can't because it plays out in other areas of my life. Um, let me think, what is an insecurity? Man, honestly, man, still affirmation, man. Um, just to be transparent with you. What do you mean by that? Um, Receiving affirmation? Just, um, okay, put it this way. So I trained in martial arts for over 22 years. Never attained my black belt in any of my disciplines. Still today? Still to this day. Why not? because my basis was trained in a system where they taught us what belts were for. It really was never about the belt, it was about the knowledge of self, mm -hmm. training yourself to become better. And then, but everyone wants that, it's like getting a degree. Right, it's like going to college for yeah. 20 years but never finishing. Yeah, so I didn't understand it until mm -hmm. now, I'm like, well, this hurts God, why, why have you denied me? But I could have fought through these things and stayed with different arts. But it was a blessing that I learned a lot. You became comprehensive. Be yes, comprehensive in my approach, but more so, now that I am here where I am, no one can take credit for what I do except God. Mm. And, and although it hurts me, even to this day, I find myself fighting to go back, because I love Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, that's my favorite now. But a mother told me this one day, she says, you gotta get yourself out of the way of those boys. What she was telling me is, you're living in the past, son. You have more than enough to do what you need to do. Another one of my martial art friends who's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, he says, Jason, you don't need another belt rank. You need four walls. And when I listen to him. What do you mean four walls? I need my own space, start teaching. Get from underneath this system. If, how are you gonna create something for now if you're training with dinosaurs? You have to evolve. That's another reason I love Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because it evolves, it adapts. And I love the camaraderie mm. and being around me and the struggle, the grapple, but I'm not called to be uh, the master of any art. Um, I always say I'm not a martial artist, I'm a man with a martial heart. A man who can love without limits, a man who won't allow the fear of being hurt to stop me from helping those who are hurting. You know, and so, mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, I didn't grow up with a father, man, so yeah. the affirmation piece, I think, will always be there, um, but I'm thankful for brothers like you, you know, um, mm -hmm. who, you know, your, your messages, you know, when you DM me, is very encouraging, man, even though it's just something light, you say, hey, check this out or whatever, but just for you to reach out to me is affirming, you yeah. know, just so you would know that. And um, and that's that's what I need, you know. Um, you need it. We all need Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And so that connection, yeah. Yeah, and that's I would say that's uh, still a, a sore spot in me. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
What's your biggest insecurity as a father? Hmm. Now that your daughter has moved away? Yeah. To um, the big LA city? Yeah. Um, not being able to get to her in 20 minutes. Mm. Um, as I wrote in my book, um, I used to try to be God in her life. You know, you used to try to be that. Basically, controlling her destiny, making sure you can't. You know, and that. See, I was so religious, man, that she would have a, a vision or idea. If it wasn't in the Bible, Perfect, it wasn't from God. No, if it wasn't in the Bible, it wasn't yeah. from God. That's why so many kids run away from God and churches because it's like this is condemning. It doesn't really. Or judgmental. It's, or, it's condemning. Yeah. It's like, you, know, you got to do this, this, and that. And then typically the person who judges that way don't even live that way. Mm -hmm. And so here it is. I'm that way, trying to be controlling, worrying. Like I can control what my daughter does. Mm -hmm. And I had to apologize and get out of God's way and say, hey, he created us all to be individuals. And it was very tough for me to even resolve in my spirit that she's going to be in L.A. But um, I had to learn that at every stage in life, we have to learn to let go. Mm -hmm. So when she was going into high school, I had to learn to let go. When she went to college, I broke down crying, packing my truck. I had to learn to let go. Now I got a beautiful daughter who's intelligent. And, and, and I mean, she, when I mention your name, she... He's on my vision board. This, 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 this. I'm like, because I may not agree with it, doesn't mean it's not what you're supposed to do. Mm. You don't agree with her, me on her vision board? You the man. <laughs> but her just being here, it's like, I know you, I know you said, but so what? Dad yeah. doesn't agree. What I need to let her know is, I get your back. Yeah. If it all doesn't go well, I get you a ticket. Today and you come yeah, home. Yeah, of course. And so just give them an opportunity. I'm a dad, man. I'm a protector, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I run through a wall for mine, you know. But it's not good for my health. So I have to mm -hmm. learn how to express it. Cry so mm -hmm. that I can love. Because if I hold that in, she'll call me. Oh, I don't want to talk to her. She's not listening to me. All of that stuff. But when I can cry and release the stress hormones from out of my body, I'm able to reset emotionally and say, okay, let me look at this again. And so, and that's mm -hmm. how we're able to um, have a good relationship that we have now. How often do you think men should cry? Well, I tell you this, and this is interesting. So women, now that the book is selling pretty well, and it hasn't even released yet, they're messaging me saying, what can we do to help our men work through this? I say, get a lot of tissue. Listen with compassion and don't respond with condemnation because mm. it's going to be a lot of crying. So I'm 48. I catch myself crying um, just thinking of something that hurt me. My mother just passed two years ago, which still isn't a long time. I think about my brothers not being here. Like, man, he would be proud. That's worthy of tears yeah. because it hurts. Um, Dr. William Frey said that he discovered that tears contain stress hormones, tears that are due to emotional stress. That's why when we cry from emotional pain, we feel better typically afterwards. Yeah. So many men, I say we need an emotional enema because we're backed up. And so once we have that enema, as our women, you know, and, it's, and I, this is, and as you said earlier, um, it's unfortunate. Um, it seems like our women always have to be there for us. You know what I mean? It's just like mm -hmm. you hear the stories, well, if it wasn't for my wife, I when she stayed here when I was drinking and yeah, hanging yeah, out, yeah. partying. And they're like, okay, well, what about my issues? Yeah. You know, and it's like, well, for African Americans, for instance, you know, I'm probably just two generations away from slavery. Wow. So how do I expect a, my father to know how to father? He doesn't. I was talking to another friend of mine who's Irish American. He talked about just the bravado that came with being Irish and how his fathers didn't love their mothers and things like that and how it affected him and how he has to work through his emotions. But then when you find out there's an old proverb, uh, proverb an Irish proverb that says, never trust a warrior who cannot cry. Mm. Then when you look at Sir Lancelot, the stories of him crying over, I can't think of the name of his, the woman he was in love with, or the samurai crying in war and then after war. 
So something happened in society, and it's really hard to pinpoint, but men crying, we should cry as often as we feel we need to. Mm-hmm. It's no judgment, man. You, you know, the greatest warriors can cry in front of, you don't, you don't, this is, this is what's comical. So you could win, me and you could win the Super Bowl. We're part, we're, we're playmates uh, on the same team, players on the same team. We could cry, thank you, <laughs> and no one says a word. Yeah, but yet when I experience trauma, my friend gets shot or a relationship, a breakup, I get demoted from a job. Why do you, this is what crushes my spirit. When I see my uh, brothers from another mother, other ethnicity besides African Americans, uh, specifically we say white, successful bankers, and you hear it, they lose their job, then they go home, kill themselves and their entire family. It's crazy. What's happened is, is that they can't release the pain. They've been put on this pedestal that they have to perform. There is no fail. So I lost my job, I'm done. We're gonna lose the college tuition also. There's no reason to live and that's a lie. Because you made it. There, there is a difference in our culture. You know, I, when I was a friend, good friend trained in Aikido, he was telling me, it's different for you. Um, you, it's harder, you have to work harder, it seems like the system is against you. So you can lose your job and you come back, and he admired the fortitude. Mm. And I had to tell him, you can lose your job and come back, because you're able to manifest the work ethic to get it, you can get another job, it's not over. And until we as men, regardless of ethnicity, can say, okay, this does not define me. Me not winning a championship does not define me. Me not getting the pay raise does not define mm-hmm. me. See, we allow this world to define what success is for us. My success, I've already succeeded. There is no failure anymore. Mm-hmm. I have a family, I have a beautiful daughter and son, and I'm healthy, healthy. I am successful. What should define us? In my opinion, Mm -hmm. who we really are. Who we are behind closed doors when no one is looking. How the people see us and love us. The person that I could be here and everyone say, man, that's a really cool guy, man. He seems, I would love to talk with him. But if I go home and I'm an a-hole, what is that? So to me, when those close to you, when the lights are off, when no one is looking, and you're the same person. Mm-hmm. You've arrived because it doesn't matter where you go. There is no pressure anymore. I'm free. Um, I have, may have a little nervousness coming to an interview or whatever, but after a moment I say, hey, what's the worst that could happen? I got my family. Mm-hmm. Even if I lost my family, just say the tragedy, God forbid. For me, being a spiritual man, I know I see them again. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't threaten me with heaven. And so to find that, that place in life, every man desires it. We just have to learn to live from it. Mm. Wow. What would you say, Alexis, this is the greatest lesson your dad ever taught you? Mm. It's so many. Um, well, I, I feel like I've adopted many things from him, even like my vision statement to be something that I haven't seen. Um, but to just be authentically me. I feel like I've learned so much, but I think the the top thing that I admire is his ability to genuinely be him. Mm -hmm. Like if, and I feel like that, that plays a role in everything I do. If I can't show up as me, it's it's no point. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. You do a great job at that. Showing up as me? Put it this way, well, that's why I want to get to know you more. Yeah. Um, because I see other things, you know. Yeah. I see a smile, but I see hurt. Yeah. And uh, I have hurt as well. Mm-hmm. The key is being able to process it. Yeah. And keep processing and keep releasing. So it never goes away. I mean, it goes away. It's always there, and it's a reminder, mm-hmm. and it could come back as pain if you don't. If you don't release con- it, so continue to release it yes. when it comes up. Yeah. Or again, like a breakup. Mm-hmm. 
I could grieve. I'm really grieving for me losing my mother two years ago. Mm -hmm. Not really over a six month relationship. Mm -hmm. But it's compounded because I haven't had time to really release that. Yeah. And so as helpful as you are to millions of people, um, I can tell you wake up like, man, I got to say something to inspire somebody. You're wired that way. Mm -hmm. My thing for you as your friend is to make sure my friend Lewis is saying, hey, uh, Jay, let's sit down. And I just want to flush some things out. Mm -hmm. That's what I would want. Yeah. That's admirable that you want to be a change agent for this world. But I want to make sure you're a change agent for Lewis. Absolutely. And that's, yeah. that's major, man. And I appreciate uh, that. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah. And I, I have the awareness to have really good coaches and friends and spiritual mm -hmm. mentors and mm -hmm. yes, do. that I lean on a lot yes. and, and, and talk with and process a lot with because I know that if I hold it in, then I'm going to suffer. And yeah. I know that I don't have all the answers and people are much wiser yes, and more yes. experienced than me. So I'm always reaching out to them and, you know. Yeah, I'm the same way. I, uh, I listen to a child, man. You know, um, I don't know it all, and I don't really want to know it all. Mm -hmm. I just want to learn and keep growing, and uh, you know, it's 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 it is a journey. And um, but I said this in the, in the video about suicide. Just because something is wrong with you doesn't mean something is wrong with you. So just because I'm sad today or I'm depressed. Many people shun those emotions because you know, it's going to stop me from attaining my goal. I got to follow the seven steps to happiness. Right. Right? I hope that's not a book. I'm just joking. So I hope it's not. But yeah, I was just just saying in general. What if that sadness or being depressed in that moment is to get you out of a bad relationship? But if you keep faking it, It'll get you to wake up and learn. Yeah. But if I got to keep stay happy and got to keep going, it's all good. You're going to miss that blessing that could come from you sitting still in that sadness mm -hmm. to say, wait a minute, why am I sad? Oh, he said this, that was offensive, or she did that, that was offensive, or this happened with this business transaction. Yeah, I shouldn't do that anymore or speak up in a way where um, they will know if that happens again, we're gonna have to cut negotiations. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so. I love this, man. Um, I'm going to make sure you guys get this book. It just came out recently, or it's pre-ordered right now? It's pre-ordered pre now. Right Actually, now. I'm sorry. It's available at Barnes & Noble's. Now. There you go. So. It's called Cry Like a Man, mm -hmm. Fighting for Freedom from Emotional Incarceration. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny because I've spoken out of prison uh, a few times. I've actually visited mm -hmm. a prison many times. My brother, who you'll meet, he's actually here. He was in prison for four years. And uh, you saw him perform, I think, on stage. Yes, I yeah. sure did. Yes, yes. And so I would visit him every weekend for four years when I was a child, eight years to 12 years old. Wow. And so I would go to a prison, and I've been in a prison here in, in uh, California in the last year a few times to do some workshops on the mask and masculinity. And it was always fascinating to be in a prison mm -hmm. because sometimes there are men behind bars who are emotionally free. Mm -hmm. Not all of them. But there are, you meet That's some that are so man. at peace and are emotionally free yeah. and are able to cry with yes. their families there yes. and are able to express their feelings. That's very good. Finally. And there are men who are in the outside world who are prisoners mm. in their hearts and their minds. Mm. And, you know, there's nothing worse than being free physically but emotionally trapped. You know, we cry, it just looks different. Yeah. We, it may not be physical tears, it's... Pornography, mm -hmm. addiction to porno yeah. porn, alcoholism, spousal abuse. Drugs, it's going whatever, to come. Yeah. It's going to come out. So why not allow it to come out the healthy way? Yeah. And and that's what's happening, man. You know, was we was doing a study on like um, like mass murderers and violent crimes, and it was interesting. The only the the few times we saw women, like it's very rare you see a woman mass murderer. Mm -hmm. Okay. We started noticing it was in tandems. It was a man and a woman. Right. Like, man, this is some interesting stuff. And so could you imagine if men learned how to process these emotions before they go grab a gun and go shoot up a place? They probably wouldn't shoot up a place. They just need a way to process. It was a guy who I don't even want to name him. He killed an elderly man on Facebook Live. And he says it because I teach about it in my workshops. He says, man, I know this is... He was on Facebook Live and he killed someone? He killed the guy. It's, oh, my gosh. It was, it's called the Easter 
massacre or something oh like my that. Gosh. But I didn't want to, you know. But he said, he's, he's deceased now, but he said, this is some punk stuff, man. And in the video, he's ranting that people wouldn't listen to him. My girl won't just shuts me off, ignores me, and that's why I'm going to go on this killing spree. He literally says that. And so I'm not saying that's why all mass murderers do what they do, but in those cases, mm -hmm. dude, you need an outlet, man. That's it. If you don't have an outlet, you'll create an outlet. You're going to create one, and now look at you. You yeah. know, and so um, that's, you know, like I said, crying like a man isn't about just shedding tears. It's about releasing the emotional pain and trauma we've held in our heart and our minds for yeah. years. You know, Setting so. yourself free. Yes, sir. You've got some amazing chapters in here. I really enjoyed going through it. I'm going to finish the rest of it soon. But uh, powerful stuff. Make Thanks. sure you guys get it. Cry like a man. Uh, final few questions for you. This one's called The Three Truths. Mm -hmm. I want you to imagine it's your final day here on this physical earth. You get to pick the day many years from now. Okay. Could be a thousand years, could be whatever you want it to be. Um, but you get to leave the world with three final truths or lessons that you've learned. No one has access to your work anymore, or your videos, or your content. You've got to take that with you. But you get to write down on a piece of paper three things you know to be true that would be the only thing you get to leave behind. What would you say are your three truths? Number one, there is a God. Clear. Number two, this is really good, man. Um, when you love yourself for who you are instead of what you do, there you'll find peace mm. because peace is not an environment. Peace is within you. Um, that's number two. And number three, um, family is a blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I never had it growing up. So I cry now because I'm so thankful that I had that. <laughs> Growing up, and all you hear is, you know, you go through so much violence, you lose loved ones to gunshots, gun violence, and just uh, not having a home, a traditionally stable home, everything is an adventure. And, uh, to have that for my kids and yeah. experience a love from a, a woman who loves me for who I am. Family is a blessing. And I don't want men to miss it because of their hurt and their pain and their insecurities. It is the greatest blessing a man could ever have. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to be wealthy was to create generational wealth, but you can't create one without a family. It's the greatest blessing God has ever given us. Mm. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Those are powerful. Thanks, man. Yeah. If there was a, uh, if there was a microphone in front of you right now, and every man in the world got to put on headphones and listen to you, say something to all the men of the world, a message, one message. And the, the, the switch turned on and they can hear you. Yeah, what would be that message? Be free, be human, express yourself. Live from the love that you feel and not the fear. Be free, be human. Hmm. That's what I would tell them, because every man feels it. We're human beings. Stop allowing masculinity. Stop misconstruing masculinity with humanity. Live from your heart, love, and watch how much freer you'll become. Mm -hmm. That's what I would tell men. That's good, man. Yeah. I want to acknowledge you for a moment, Jason, for, for just being the example, mm -hmm. being the father that the world needs. 
-hmm. because I know that you didn't have the relationship with your father or the example that you wanted, mm -hmm. and you're creating that for so many young boys, men, myself, mm -hmm. and you're being an example of what's possible for us in this generation, in this time of mental confusion, mm -hmm. emotional confusion, sexual confusion, yes. stress, anxiety. So. I just want to acknowledge you for your heart, your kindness, your love, your generosity Thanks. to humanity. It's it's very powerful, and um, you're setting a great example for me as well. So I appreciate Thank that. You. That means a lot. Of course, Thanks. man. Yeah. Um, where can we connect with you online? And um, my handle is uh, at Mr. Jason O. Wilson. And um, for the cable of Adelman, they wanted to know more. But actually, just go to crylikeaman.com, okay. and eventually, that's going to be a hub for. Uh, mental and emotional health services for men, resources. Love it. And a place where we can, a safe space where we can really be free. Crylikeaman.com. You can get the book there. You can follow you there. You can yes. see everything. Yes. Um, final question. What's your definition of greatness? Hmm. You've got some good questions, <laughs> man. Um, My definition of greatness is the same as success. Um, every person has to define it. For me, it is uh, being a servant of God, a loving husband, um, a faithful father, and a community servant. And, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people congratulate me by, uh, with a lot that's going on. It's not really celebratory to me because I'm on a mission. Um, to me, this opportunity is like God dropping a pallet of ammunition in the middle of a battlefield. I'm not, yay, I'm not doing that. I have my rifle or whatever, M16 or AR-15, and I'm running to get this ammunition to go help more boys and mm -hmm. men and families. And so um, I'm content. I'm taught to be content in all things. Does that mean that I don't strive for additional things? No. But I don't burn out chasing anything mm -hmm. anymore like I used to. Mm. I'm okay with going to sleep if the five other things didn't get done. Yeah. So uh, success is, is, for me, is having a family and, and being content, man. Yeah. Uh, life is too short to be chasing the wind. Mm -hmm. Jason, appreciate it, man. Bless you, man. Thanks, yeah, really. Appreciate it. Appreciate this big time. It's yeah. awesome.